When I sent you home, I didn't mean for you to never come back. My grandmother died. I know. Look, you obviously weren't ready to deal with it. So I respected that by keeping you busy. Was I wrong? No. You stoned? Yep. I'm not interested in a lecture, so. Good, because I'm not interested in giving one. Yeah, help yourself. Don't mind if I do. Is this a coffee cart guy? The whole bag? How do you even do that, man? It's, I, I got like crazy cotton mouth right now. Harvey Specter doesn't get cotton mouth. Cotton mouth? Mouth. <laughs> I guess Harvey Specter does get cotton mouth. I can't help it. These pretzels are You're making, making me, me thirsty. thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> Here, drink this, rookie. Oh God. <laughs> Did you ever hear of a hanger? Oh my God! Wow. <laughs> I just got an image of you as a dad. <laughs> like a little Harvey Specter, you know, all hair gelled and like pinstripe Oshkosh bagosh. Dad, don't play the odds, play the man. It's a it's a win-win. You being like, go to your goddamn room. Oh, look at this. You bought an apartment in Manhattan. I got it for her. Oh. I always hated the word orphan. I, mean, I just I never felt like one until now. I ever tell you about my dad? I think you know the answer to that question. He was a saxophone player. He sat in with everybody because everybody loved him. He believed in love at first sight. And unfortunately, his first sight was a groupie. Your mother. I was 16 when I caught her cheating. I knew if I told my dad, he'd... Next two years went by, I didn't say a thing, and she went right on just making him a fool. Look, this is all to say that I lived in a house surrounded by family, but I know what it's like to be totally alone. You're stoned is depressing. You should never share your feelings ever again. But I mean, not with me. What can I say, it's been a tough week for both of us. Hardman. Oh, what I wouldn't give to piss in that bastard's office. It's pretty quick off the tongue. Well, I've done it before. To Lewis. No way. Way. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. If you've done that before, why not do it again? Okay, let's go. No, 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 It's not right. It's not right. I drank three Gatorades on the way here. I'm gonna pee orange, it's right. No. What? If we're gonna do something, it needs to be original. Orange. You know what? I know what we're gonna do. I'm gonna get the can opener. Are you serious right now? You're not messing with me? You're finally gonna tell me what you do with that can opener? Do I look serious? You look stoned. I am, but I never joke about the can opener. Come on. Let's go, let's go. Come on, come on, go, go, go. All right. What we do is, If you were a narcissist with great hair, what would your password be? Psst, Harvey. 
Spectre. No, it's just way too easy. One of his favorite basketball players, Shaquille O'Brien. I still don't understand the thumbtack thing. It's surprising, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, say what you will about this floor. Pretty sure the cubicles are bigger. <clears throat> hey, what's going on? How you guys doing? I was just uh, helping box a little bit because uh, Donna was feeling a little blue about moving. What the hell are you doing? Harvey. Harvey, you looking for another way to make my life miserable? Harvey, Harvey, no, come on. You hit him, they win. Should have let me hit him. Uh, I don't know about that, but maybe we shouldn't have let him leave. Why? Uh, maybe he wasn't snooping. Maybe he was, I don't know, trying to plant something like, like drugs. In my record collection? What better place to stash the weed than with the Bob Marley, man? Louis doesn't even know where to buy drugs, let alone plant them. I know where to buy drugs. Congratulations. No, I'm serious. What if instead of peeing, we planted something in Hardman's office? Ah, genius. It's a crime. Maybe, but he wouldn't hesitate for one second to do the same thing to get rid of you. What? He wouldn't hesitate to plant something to get rid of me. What, Lewis? No, Hardman. I just said that. No. What if Hardman planted the CM memo in the first place? Well, Donna never saw the memo. Donna never makes mistakes. What if she never saw it four years ago because it wasn't there? And then it was. You really think you have the balls to walk into that file room, open a box, and plan a document? No security cameras and no locks on the doors. Fine, but how did he get the document in the first place? Harvey brought Coastal Motors into the firm. Yeah, but he wasn't here when the case went to trial. No, not the trial, the defect. What's the date Sarah Layton left CM? Here. Harbin was still here. It makes sense. Sarah Layden confronts Kemp. He panics. Who's the first person he calls? His lawyer. Harbin tells him to bury it. That's a crime. You said yourself he wouldn't hesitate to commit a crime. He knew the cars were bad from the beginning. <laughs> what? When Harbin came back, the first thing he did was ask Lewis for a report on every case at the firm. Yeah, he was looking for weaknesses. He knew the CM win was based on a lie made it look like it was my lie. Which brings us to? Tanner. Hardman couldn't bring the suit himself. He needed an executioner. And he picked Tanner. So when I suspected something was fishy, I'd focus on Tanner, not him. They were in on it together. I went through every box that Hardman looked at to find dirt on Tanner. There was no dirt. You need to call a partner meeting. I'll call for it. Five minutes after you get me some proof. 